Ladies and gentlemen, the CEO of Trump Hotels, Mr. Eric Danziger, Mr. Donald Trump Jr., Ivanka Trump, Mr. Eric Trump, and Mr. Donald J. Trump. Please be seated. Welcome everyone to the official opening of our Trump International Hotel, Washington, D.C. We are so proud to be in this city which brims with the nation's history and is so very rich with iconic buildings, monuments, all of which give all of us a great deal of pride. Now it's altogether appropriate that I would use the word welcome, which comes from the old innkeeping term, it is well that you come. It also comes from the word welcuma, which means to receive with pleasure. Well, today all of us receive you with great pleasure. We're very honored and thrilled that you're here with us today to share a very special day. We're obviously very delighted with this wonderful property, which reflects the company's deep respect for the heritage and history which exists here but is coupled with new and vibrant and beautiful and brilliant features and facilities. But I should say that in this business, this is the business of hospitality. So as amazing as this building is, and we couldn't be more pleased or proud of it, it is the people inside our buildings which bring our buildings and our brand to life every day. We're very, very pleased and proud of all of the people in our company who have worked tirelessly with incredible dedication to make this the destination we share today. I like to say, having started as a bellman in this business, that our people are the heart and the heartbeat of this company. They are the body, the face, the soul of Trump Hotels. They are deeply committed, deeply committed, to provide unparalleled services and experiences to you. They reflect our company mantra, never, ever settle. And I hope that all of you have many, many occasions over time to come and experience this wonderful hotel. But if you allow me a moment of a commercial, I hope you will experience our other wonderful hotels as well. Since Donald Trump launched the hotel group a decade ago, this entire company has been committed and pride, it prided itself on meeting the exacting standards of quality and service that he envisioned for the brand. He wanted guests to experience truly an unrivaled travel experience, which certainly means beautiful and appealing design, but needed to have superior personalized service. And I think his personal involvement, honestly, and the commitment to that purpose is what ultimately led to this great property. You see, he envisioned this grand hotel personally and then worked and led the effort to make it so. So he and his family's passion inspired all the rest of us in the organization to deliver what was envisioned. We're celebrating that together today. Now, this year has been a very rewarding year, really, for Trump Hotels. Our business continues to exceed our targets and we continue to achieve great accolades. You know, our properties have been recognized by Forbes for five-star hotels, AAA for five diamond. These are great distinctions. Just this month, eight of our hotels were recognized with 2016 Condé Nast Traveler Reader's Choice Awards. Very, very proud of this company. <laughs> Now, we've been able to leverage our success and the Trump family's vision and commitment and together with our talented people to launch an entirely new brand in addition to, but different than, Trump Hotels. It's also different than anything the industry has experienced before. Our new Scion Hotel brand is very timely, re very relevant, and connects and engages guests with other guests and has a strong sense of community. By the way, on our hotel, just to share a little bit of boastful pride about our people, 
We've only been open a couple of weeks now and we're really thrilled with the successes here as well. We've had several major conventions, several major meetings. The Benjamin Bar and Lounge is busier than we anticipated. We've had 232 site visits and we've had two couples get married already. <laughs> So we set the bar high, and we will continue to raise the bar all the time. Now, community is something we don't take for granted, and this hotel is a terrific example. When it comes to a project this complex, it does take a community to bring it about. And there are so many people, including many elected officials, federal, local government, that should be thanked. Uh, and it's not possible to do all of them, but if you allow me a brief opportunity just to name a few. Many thanks to everyone and special thanks to the General Services Administration, including Kevin Terry, Brett Banks, Paula DeMuth, Daniel Bro, Amina Wright, Edmund Newman, Nancy Witherell, Laura Doyle, Joe Daffins, Sabikos Papadimichis, I don't know, close, David Maloney, Andy Lewis, Audrey Tepper, Thomas Lukey, Sarah Batchelor, Frederick Lindstrom, Jennifer Hirsch, Rebecca Miller, Elliot Dooms, Jeff Miller, and Ivan Matthews. To all of you and others, thank you so very much. <laughs> well, now I'd like to finally welcome one of the most significant drivers of this project, a very talented entrepreneur, a visionary and overall incredible woman. She's played a truly significant role in bringing our company and this iconic hotel to life. As Executive Vice President of Acquisitions and the Development of Trump Organization, she is involved in all aspects of the business. Now Ivanka and her equally talented brothers, Eric and Donald Jr., have developed Trump Hotels into the fastest growing luxury hotel company in the world. And you also may know that Ivanka is the founder of the Ivanka Trump Collection and IvankaTrump.com, which is the ultimate destination for women who work. She's a real powerhouse in the fashion world, from everything from fine jewelry and apparel and accessories. But despite all of that, despite all of that, her dedication and attention to the hotel group and this hotel has been unwavering. She is, in fact, the guiding force of what was done. She never settles for anything less than the best. Please join me in welcoming Ivanka Trump. Thank you, Eric. Hello, everyone. It's an honor to stand before you today and officially welcome you to Trump International Hotel and Tower, Washington, DC. This has been an unforgettable year for my family for many reasons. As Eric said, our business at Trump Hotels continues to thrive. In the last 12 months, we have completed the redevelopment of Trump National Doral in Miami, Florida, the iconic Turnberry Resort in Scotland, and the stately Golf International Golf Links Dune Bag in Ireland. Next month, we're opening a stunning hotel and residential tower in Vancouver, Canada. We've also launched our newest brand, Scion, which will enable us to expand our quickly growing footprint beyond five-star ultra-luxury markets and locations, such as this one. We have celebrated many milestones, but the one that gathers us here today, the grand opening of the redeveloped old post office building, is incredibly special to each member of my family, both personally and professionally. A renovation is much more complex than a ground-up construction project and the redevelopment of the building we're standing in has been perhaps the most challenging and gratifying of them all. When this property was originally built in 1899, its grandeur was meant to signal to the rest of the country that Pennsylvania Avenue was America's main street. A full city block in the heart of Washington, D.C., you didn't have to be a visionary to see the potential, despite the fact that in recent years, time has taken its toll on this national treasure. In 2011, the old post office was considered the most sought after redevelopment opportunity in the country. And my father and I fought hard against the largest hotel companies and developers in the world to win the deal. 
Over the course of eight months, our team worked nonstop to study the building and strategize the best approach to restore it to its full potential, and then some. After an exhaustive evaluation process, we were ultimately awarded the deal by the United States government. We were selected by a panel of judges based on criteria that included our vision for the property, the strength and experience of our development team, our company's financial wherewithal, our track record, and our plan to bring vibrancy to Pennsylvania Avenue. One of the reasons I love real estate, a passion inherited by, from my father, is because at the end of years of hard work, there exists a tangible validation of your efforts and the efforts of so many people. My father trained my siblings and me to see things not for what they are, but for what they can be. This is a great example of that. It's been a gift he's had his entire life. Over the last 18 months, my father has been focusing on campaigning for president, but everyone on his team put in the extra effort so as not to let him down. Across the board, hundreds of men and women involved in the design, construction, and now the operation of this project made it a point of personal pride to be extra precise in their work to ensure that it was completed to his extremely high standards, my brothers and I included. A good sign, a sign of a good leader, is how hard his or her team works when the boss is not there. My father's team has worked very, very hard on this building, and we're standing here today, it's evidence of that tremendous effort. Including the historic clock tower, which still houses our nation's bells of Congress, the old post office is the second tallest building in Washington, D.C., after the monument. Behind a backlit onyx facade is the city's largest luxury ballroom, and within the building itself, our guests will discover the most spacious suites in the district, complete with soaring 16 to 24-foot ceilings. We have painstakingly preserved original architectural elements like the intricate stone carvings and granite facade, extraordinary millwork on the doors, wood doors, moldings, and the marble wainscoting throughout the building. We surveyed each of the almost 1,200 windows and restored them all to none condition. A few weeks ago, I met a contractor here on site who was wearing a Trump shirt. He was very proud to tell me that he had helped my father build Trump World Tower in New York City more than 15 years ago. As a daughter, this political season has been one of the most interesting journeys of my life. But each day, I've heard critics attempt to discredit my father's business. But honestly, I'll tell you, one of the most telling signs of his success over decades is the thousands of people who have worked with him, worked for him, fought with him, and who continue to stand by his side in their quest to achieve great things. When this property was put out to bid, Congressman John Micah, chairman of the House Oversight Committee, held a press conference in the vacant building. It was without heat, and in the freezing cold, he admonished the crowd about government access and noted that the old post office was losing the United States government between six and eight million dollars a year. At a committee hearing following our soft opening last month, Congressman Micah said that Trump International Hotel, Washington, D.C., is now creating hundreds of jobs and is a stellar example of turning underutilized federal properties around with the help of the private sector. When we commenced construction and at the groundbreaking ceremony, I pledged my family's commitment to this pro project and to ensuring its successful execution. I told you that we would not disappoint you and that we would never let you down. Today is a celebration, not just of meeting, but exceeding those goals. This achievement wouldn't be possible without our extraordinary team at the Trump Organization. Thank you also to the design and preservation architect, Hani Hussein of Buyer Blender Bell, and interior designer, Betsy Hughes of Hirschbender Associates, for their tremendous contribution to the project. I would also like to thank the many elected officials and staff members of the federal and DC governments who I've had the opportunity to work with so closely, including the General Services Administration, National Park Service, Commission of Fine Arts, 
National Capital Planning Commission, D.C. Mayor's Office, Fire Department, the Police Department, and the Historic Preservation Office. Additionally, I would also like to extend a special thank you to Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton. She has been the fiercest and most passionate advocate for this building's redevelopment and a great partner over the last five years. She is someone I have great respect for and that I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed getting to know. Finally, thank you to my father, who took a few hours away from his grueling schedule on the campaign trail to be here today. Two years ago, when we promised the city of D.C. that Trump would be coming to Pennsylvania Avenue in 2016, we had no idea what we were foreshadowing. <laughs> this is an important moment for our family and our company, and it wouldn't be possible without the hard work and support of this visionary man. So without further ado, let me introduce my father, Donald J. Trump. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Melania, Tiffany, Laura. Thank you very much. Well, we're very proud of our company. We've built one of the great real estate companies of the world. But it seems very insignificant compared to what we're doing now. And as soon as we're finished cutting the ribbon, I'm off to North Carolina, New Hampshire, and back down to Florida. Well, I hear we're doing very well. With the notable exception of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, this is the most coveted piece of real estate in Washington, D.C., the best location. I'm honored to be here today to support my family, and especially my daughter Ivanka for her dedication to this project. She worked so hard. I'm also honored to have a chance to thank the incredible team of people who brought our vision for Washington's historic old post office to life, including hundreds of construction workers, electricians, maintenance workers, and so many others who helped make this project a reality. They're really the important ones. A project like this demonstrates what is possible when a team works together for a totally common purpose. It also shows how to work with our government and to get things done. My theme today is five words. Under budget and ahead of schedule. That's what we did. Under budget and ahead of schedule. So important. We don't hear those words too often in government, but you will. Our agreement with the government required completion of the project by 2018. We were dramatically ahead of schedule on this project and under budget. We turned a property that had been neglected for decades and which was losing huge sums of money for the federal government into a major revenue producer and job creator. This is what I want to do for our country, and this is what we're working so hard to do. Right now, just about everything our government touches is broken or they break it. It's always over budget, behind schedule, and simply nothing works. Look at the Veterans Administration, where new hospitals come in hundreds of millions of dollars over budget, and yet our brave veterans still don't get anywhere near the kind of care they need or deserve. Look at our decaying infrastructure. Look at our aging military equipment. Our military is so depleted, despite having the greatest people on Earth. I mean, they are the greatest people in our military, but it's so depleted. The tax code is broken. The education system is broken. We spend the most for any of any country on education, and we get bad results. And so many parts of our country are in a state of disrepair. And now it was just announced yesterday that Obamacare is in freefall, with premiums going up massively, and places like the great state of Arizona going up over 
100% in cost, unaffordable, unusable, and doesn't work even if you can afford it. The American people know what this election is about, and they see it every time they get their health care bills in the mailbox or ride down a highway that's broken or go to an airport that looks like it's from a third world country. Remember, Hillary said herself, it was called Hillary Care before it was called Obamacare. She made that statement not too long ago. Now she's trying to withdraw that statement. She wants to withdraw that statement so badly, Newt. And by the way, congratulations, Newt, on last night. That was an amazing interview. That was an amazing. We don't play games, Newt, right? We don't play games. I've loved my life and business, and I've loved getting to share my dreams with my family. It's an incredible family. And Melania, I want to thank you very much. You have been amazing. My job is to look at undeveloped spaces and imagine what they could be. These are spaces that have no hope, have no future. But you need imagination, and you need the ability to get them done and to unlock their potential and to unlock the potential of the people working on those spaces and on those projects. And we have so many things we can do for our country. Where others have only dead ends, I've dreamed of the amazing possibilities that we have. That's why government has turned to me in the past to fix projects that had gone nowhere that were considered total disasters, whether it's turning a landfill at Ferry Point after many, many years of futile work in the Bronx, New York, into a world-class golf course that's now open and doing unbelievable business, or revitalizing the facade of the great Grand Central Terminal, or building and saving Wolman Rink in Central Park after eight years of futility and spending massive amounts of money and getting it done in four months for a very small amount of money. So many different things. Today is a metaphor for what we can accomplish for this country. Same kind of thing. This building is a historical landmark, a true American original. It had all of the ingredients of greatness, but it had been neglected and left to deteriorate for many, many decades. It sat there so beautiful and so empty and was falling into a very, very bad state of condition. It had the foundation for success. All of the elements were here. Our job was to restore its former glory, honor its heritage, but also to imagine a brand new and exciting vision for the future, to create a new place for people and families to come together, and a magnificent place at that. I've been very lucky and I've led a great life. Now I want to give back to the country which I love so much and has been so good to me. I want to go into the inner cities, the poor rural communities, and the failing schools, and I want to work on a national plan of revitalization. I'm tired of the excuses from our politicians. I'm tired of being told what cannot be done. I'm tired of people asking Americans to defer their dreams to another day, but really what they mean is to another decade. Enough waiting. The time is now. We can achieve our goals for this country, and we can do so more quickly than anyone ever thought possible. There is nothing we cannot accomplish. The United States is great. It's great. It's people are great. There is no task or project too great. There is no dream outside of our reach. Don't ever let anyone tell you it can't be done. The future lies with the dreamers, not the cynics and the critics. Everywhere I go in this country, all I see is untapped potential waiting to be set free. And the biggest element of all is our incredible people the people of this country. They're just waiting. They're waiting and waiting, and I think maybe now their time has come. But we will realize never 
that the potential we continue to put on our faith and the faith of our country. And we have to say the word never will always have to be taken out because we have such tremendous potential. We have to choose the most optimistic path. We have to choose to believe not our politicians that in many cases truly don't know what they're doing, but to believe in ourselves and in our country. If we do that, anything is possible. I'm asking America to join me in dreaming big and bold and dream for wonderful things in our future. Let's close the history books on the failures in Washington and let's open a new chapter of success and prosperity for all of our people. We have a divided nation, a seriously divided nation, all of our people. That is how we will truly make America great again. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So we're now going to the lobby. Uh, this is a ballroom, brand new. This was where the old shopping center was, which was not a part of the building. We made it a part of the building. And this is now the largest luxury ballroom in Washington. And great. We're going into the lobby. We're going to cut a ribbon. Then I'm going to North Carolina. Thank you. <laughs>